The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. Oh boy, oh boy. It's March. It's madness. North Carolina's legal for gambling. I don't know where to start. Tim's, Tampa Tim's, in the studio, was trying to give us all the good stuff pre-recording. Uh, the professor didn't go to the race last week. I'm not sure he could survive a week away from the races, but he's on spring break with his kids. We got Trav in the homemade studio with the mic ripping. Oh, we've moved on to bush lattes from the silver bullet to a bush latte. And I'm remote. This uh, colorful artwork, if you're watching on YouTube, is not my home. This is a, uh, uh, a Bahamas spring break trip, which good news. Let's start with the important stuff. Casino and sports book in this casino tips. A plus. Nice. Nice. That's good. My, my little, my youngest, we went to the roulette table last night. She walked away a $26 winner, so she's hooked for life. There you go. There you Can't go. Can't go broke, turn a profit. Start me on. And then my son's here with us, and so he watched the Vandy game go to OT in the sports book, which is always a great place. So where, which side of that were you on? I was on Arkansas. I was on Arkansas. Yeah. Which they ended up covering at the end, right? It was like a backdoor yeah. cover in overtime because Vanderbilt, I don't even think, played overtime. Yeah, should have had this. They should have been down at half anyway, first of all, but – I don't know how, as a coach, you don't call a timeout in the last minute and a half when you haven't secured an inbounds pass. They, they stole the last, like, four or five to get them back in the game, and you don't call a timeout. They got the next one. Don't worry. They didn't. They never had it, but they covered, so a win's a win. That's when you jump up in the sports book and be like, don't you know I'm betting on this? Call yeah. a timeout. I know. The exactly. SEC had us uh, sweating because I was on the uh, Georgia-Missouri game. Missouri was 0-18 this year, and – Georgia barely won minus two and a half. I had so we uh, Tim's and I had some late night uh, sweats going. Mm -hmm. I love it. Speaking of sweats, Professor, how did that predictor do out there in the desert with you not in attendance? Well, it was it wasn't as great. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> you can tell by the length of the wells how this because if he goes well, that means he's ready. That means he's got like eight of ten. That means my stuff was awesome. But when it's a well, that means he's getting ready to get. Listen, this is going to be a shovel full of horse manure. Go ahead, Professor. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. We had I had, I nailed five 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 of them last week. How about that? What does that mean? That was the most useless stat I've ever heard in my life. Five out of forty. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had we had four of the top seven top 10 we predicted to be in the top 10 so where did it go wrong where did you have christopher well, bell what, on your predictor hendrick hendrick really screwed me let's put it that way because they because they weren't good they weren't good we we thought hendrick was going to go out there and perform like they always do and and they just were not good none in the top 10 it was a toyota but, dominance out there toyota's on fire so, what does you know, that mean for you, Tampa Tim? Did you get drugged down with the well, or did you somehow find your way out of that? I, I kind of hammered some Toyotas. I had Denny in that first pit stall. That thing was it was money until he spun out. Um, and then I threw. Some well, okay, for the record, me. though, I, I can't put that on the professor. No, um, no. The the first pit stall stat that you brought last week was a plus. He was plus a bazillion until he decided to spin out. Yeah, it was mentioned all week too. So I, I mean, we were on it. We were on it. Um, so that was just bad luck. And then I, ha I sprinkled a little bit on Christopher Bell because he was fast in practice. And uh, I didn't think I had a shot after he qualified pretty poorly. But uh, it hit. So that kind of covered the day. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now we're going to Bristol. And I, if you, can you see the smile? I mean, it should be ear to ear because you know why? It, you know what the dirt's <laughs> for? A parking lot. We race on asphalt and concrete. Ladies and gentlemen, now my son raced on dirt. I like dirt racing, but not with these big, heavy, behemoth stock cars. We are going back to the concrete. We're going back to the high banks. We're going back to the world's fastest half mile. I couldn't be happier. So, Professor, well, first, before we get into Bristol Trap, I haven't been checking my social because I've been on spring break. Do we have any do we have any winners, or do they all go, well, right down the toilet with the professor? So I can't forget the guy's name, but I love it because he goes, I was sweating this Blaney bet, and it was a dollar to win 220, and I just couldn't be more happy of our fan there just putting a dollar down to have some fun. That's the exclamation point. So, so let's be clear. It doesn't matter what your unit is. We use the word unit. It can be a percentage of your bankroll. There's all these math things. That's for the hardcore gambler. When we say unit, it's not really a percentage of the bankroll because Tim's doesn't have a yearly percent bankroll. It is more of a denomination that Tim's is comfortable betting. I know that's not the 
gambler definition. The gambler definition is a percentage of the bankroll, blah, 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 blah. Tim's, don't you agree? That's a, yeah. It's a fun way around your friends where you can be like, hey man, I'm up like 10 units. Congratulations, yeah. right? Like that way I don't, I don't care if your unit's a dollar or a hundred dollars. It's really none of my business. Yeah, totally. That's just what I normally bet. That's my unit. Um, so other than the uh, three-card poker table downstairs that's going to pay the bills this weekend, what else is going to pay the bills? Let's talk about heading to Bristol. Let's talk about the predictor. How I, There's one name we're going to talk about. It's the first name I'm going to get to. You didn't even send me the predictor this week, so I haven't seen it. Um, let's go he with did. this. He did. Guess I don't what? see it. It was in text. It's right here. If anybody's listening... And they do any business in text message and it irritates the crap out of them, you could be on this <laughs> podcast. Because when you, there should be documents that are emailed, the professor likes to text them. I think he's basically just trying to not be old, is why he does it. He likes to, he likes to think that he's still trendy. Oh, look at that. I did find it. <laughs> we're, there's one name we're starting with. I, we're, not going, we're not even starting at the top. How do you have Kyle Bush, a tier four driver at Bristol? I gotta have some. I gotta have some information on this. Well, Kyle, if you're listening, this is the professor telling me you, the guy that's won as much as DW at Bristol. Go ahead. How, how was he tier four? Look at his last three fin- finishes at Bristol: twenty, thirty fourth, twenty first. You know, the last time he finished in the top ten there was during COVID, twenty twenty. L- look at his season this year. Other than that finish at, at Atlanta, that RCR has just been on the struggle bus. That was well defended. Do you really think, though, let, give me your, I know you hate to do this. I know the stats say 18th. Would you say he's a tier four shading up? It's still Kyle Busch at Bristol? Well, it's still, it's still Kyle Busch at Bristol. Like, I, I think you, you have to look at that, but the computer doesn't look at that, right? Like, so. So, so it, hold the on then. So is this a guy that you could adjust after practice? That's really why I'm asking. So I know it's totally, only a little short totally. practice, but if Kyle Busch is like Kyle Busch-esque, top seven or eight car, you think he would make a big shift in the predictor. Totally. And, and he, got, he got adjusted last week after practice, but it was not the way he wanted to go. Agreed. All right. So there, I just practice. had to get that out of the way. I mean, the guys won more swords than, than the sushi restaurant down here, and my man won't even put him in tier two or three. So top of the list, uh, even though Hendrick did him dirty last week, he's still at the Hendrick world. It's basically a Hendrick Gibbs top four, Larson, Hamlin, Byron, Elliott. Three Hendrick cars in the top four. Then we have Blaney and Bell make up tier one. Tier two, the Kez, Logano, Busher, Chastain, both RFK cars in tier two. Tier three, I can't believe he's in tier three because it's the professor's favorite driver, Martin Truex Jr. Then Briscoe, Bowman, Wallace, Reddick, Gibbs. Great run last week for Gribbs. I know it didn't finish like you wanted, but but um, runs like that, you know, those will turn into something. So, Tim's, let's just jump right. Well, first of all, on the predictor, is there anything else you want to try to defend before we get into this gambling? No, I, I would say the predictor has done Ty Gibbs dirty too. Like I, I would, I'm mo- like if you really look at what's going on with him, he finished fifth there at Bristol last year, led a I think 105, 102 laps, and he's been top five the last two weeks, and he's basically been in every race. Like he's been a factor in every race this year, going back to the Coliseum even. So I, I think that's a, where would you a, put him? He's definitely well, he put him 16th. What do you mean? Where did he put no, him? No, that's but, that, but that's the model. That's not his. I, I know. I, know, I think I just, he's a top 10 driver this week, especially when you look at well, so, Gibbs led over a, like Gibbs organization led over. I think it was 400 laps at uh, Bristol last year. Well, so does it Las Vegas. They have him the ninth. Uh, ninth on odds, really in the top 10 on odds. He's just outside 10 to 1. He's 12, 13, 14, kind of dependent on where you shop it. Uh, Larson's the favorite at 4.5 to 1. Hamlin, 5 to 1. Bell, 5.5 to 1. Then a big jump, which is a little interesting. Normally we see some 7s, 8s, and 9s. Not this week. This week we go Byron, Blaney, Busher, Kez, Reddick. The wait is over, NASCAR fans. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live in North Carolina. And right now, new customers get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. Just go to fanduel.com slash dough to sign up. Then you can bet on everything from individual race winners, prop bets, to which driver is going to take home the championship. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Start your engines with $250 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 bet. 
Visit FanDuel.com slash Doug, D-O-U-G-H, to get started. FanDuel, authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. 21 and over and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Well, then let's just jump right in at Tim's. Let's start with winners or at least top threes, fours, fives. Before we get into matchups, what do you like? Where are you at for the week? After, by the way, he didn't come on here all braggadociously, which he should have. Monster day on the hard court yesterday for Tampa Tim's. The reason he didn't brag is because he has three more days to cough it back up. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll even out. It'll even out. Don't worry. It was the first day. But yeah, big day. Give us yesterday. one. What was what did you have? What was a parlay? Like what 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 crazy parlay hit? Just give me something. Oh, I had a I had a six team boosted parlay. I think I had I just took all money lines. I the you know what the last sweat was? Villanova money line over DePaul. That was the last sweat to win five hundred dollars. And then USC as well. But uh Did yeah, you see that Colgate gym, by the way? I love the I gym at Colgate, man. Is, uh, so is, the Col- it, it's like a high school gym, but they had cameras in. Like it was awesome. It looked like you were watching a great varsity game. Oh yeah, it pulled the bleachers. Yeah, it was, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, we had we we had a good day yesterday. I have a quick question okay, before we get to the winners qualifying. How is why is Denny and uh, Seabell such a low number compared to everybody else? Denny is plus two seventy five for qualifying. Seabell three fifty. The next is Larson at 600. Professor's going to dig some info up. Well, Denny was on the poll there last year. He's been he's started in the top 10 uh, five of the last seven races there. Um, and, and then Bell's been similar. He was third and fourth the last two times we've been there. So, or no, no, no. He actually bet. Hold on. I got my things mixed up. Bell was on the pole last year, and he started in the top ten the last three year, three years. And then Denny, Denny was Denny's been on the pole there recently too. So I, I think you know with the Gibbs speed and and their history with the pole, that that's why. I got a name I want to talk about specifically for qualifying. Um, give me Eric Jones's Bristol numbers qualifying in the race. You want starting numbers or? Finishing numbers. Let's start with starting. Starting. Let's start with starting. Not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel great about his starting numbers there. Okay. How about his finishing? Why do I feel like he runs well there? So he's been top ten in three of the last five there. And I only say this, guys, because I think this is one of those tracks that you know Toyota to Legacy. Toyota was great last week. I mean, I don't know. They're supposedly a tier one car. I think Jones has been outperforming his equipment the last three or four years there. You know, if you with me there, Professor, like I would say the car, yep. you know, he's outrunning where we think the car should run. So, no, so I'm just saying this could be a lightning in the bottle. I'm not saying a win, but this is a guy that you can get plus 160 for a top 10. And I don't think that's crazy out of the, out of the odds for Eric Jones. I agree. All right, Tampa Tims, you're on the block. Give me your picks. Give me the ones you love. So, I mean, I, I like the favorites, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, William Byron, but the couple kind of like mid- middle-of-the-road guys, Chris Buescher, he's so fast here, Brad Keselowski. But I got one guy that I think is getting a little overlooked. It might be a sprinkle, and it's Michael McDowell. I feel like he runs pretty well here, like top 10, top 12, top 15. He's 20th on the predictor, but I think that's kind of shortchanged. Plus – you know, he's one of those guys that's kind of, you know, I think he finished eighth last week. He's hot right now. He's He can get more out of that car. I think he's worth a sprinkle. It's kind of like uh, Matt's Benedetto story from a couple of years ago. It might be one of those guys that just sneaks one out there. I don't know. So he might be worth a sprinkle this week. So sprinkle, oh. are you saying he's 60 to one to win? He's plus 240 top 10. I mean, that top I like 10 him. is very interesting. Yeah, I like him a lot top 10. I like him and a, a lot of the hot hands like Josevar, Briscoe. Uh, Gregson, because they're wheelmen, they can get that car into the top ten if it's if it's running decent. Um, and I think if you hit two of these, you'll make your money and and then some. So, uh, you know, the Fords now Fords are really good the last couple of years. I I think here, so I like that. But Toyotas, I think, will be really fast here too. So, 
I don't know. Can't go wrong with either one. I don't think you're wrong. Listen, I like that angle because let's talk about those guys. So what you're basically saying is you got McDowell at 240, Briscoe at 240, Gregson at 240, Hosevart at 275, Stenhouse at 350. Um, you know, if you, if you picked a couple, three of them, and you get two of them in the top ten, one would be almost a break even. Yeah. Uh, it would be a little loss. Right? If you put a unit on three of them, you got one inside the top ten, it's a little loss. Two in the top ten is a big win. Why yeah. I was on Stenhouse, what are Stenhouse's numbers? Stenhouse finished top 10 there last year, but that was his first top 10 there since 2018. I, th- I thought. I thought this was a track that we used to think it was up his list, and then it faded away. I think it's a little yeah, unknown. He had those, JTG. He had those two runner-up finishes there back in the day, and that's why we you know, we had yeah. all this thoughts on him. But not, that's not yeah. a bad bet, but... But you said another name there that really interests me, which was Carson Hosevar. You know, he was he was here in a Cup car last year. He finished eleventh in like his single-handed 22. starts. Yeah, yeah. So and and he's been really good lately. Like he's shown really good speed lately. And I'm talking, you can get almost twenty to one for a top three. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's it's fun. worth like a. I know, That's, but gosh, if you could hit it, it'd be like a story. You could have a shirt that said, I got cashed on Hosevar's top three. <laughs> <laughs> I like your shirt idea. I'm, I'm all about the shirt idea. I know. I know. Um, what else you got, Tim? Should we move on to matchups? Yeah, I like a lot of matchups this week. Uh, let's move on to matchups. I got guys I on love Faden. Matchups. I got guys on Faden and more oh, please, like matchups. Please, please. I'm Who's Faden, Faden? Ryan, please. I'm fading Blaney and Logano. I, for some reason, I think Logano wrecks every time here. Could be wrong about that. So I think he's had a tough start to the year too, in the races at least. So I think I'm fading that. Blaney, on the other hand, I'm going opposite. I'm kind of just trying to get off him early because he's 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 finished well, but I don't really see him up there. And we say it every week. He kind of just survives the day. I don't think that's going to happen this week. I'm trying to get ahead of it. I think there'll be a little bit of a decline. You can't survive forever. Uh, so I'm fading those two. And then I'm going with the predictor. I'm fading Kyle Busch, too. So let's talk about the weekend. What's going to be interesting is I know we're back to the concrete. We've been running the concrete in the summer. The big conversation about the concrete is always when the bottom goes away and they move to the top, whether they spray the stuff, don't spray the stuff. And it's going to be hard to predict because the weather, while it's supposed to be a very nice weekend for the fans, it's still cool versus the summer race. That's going to absolutely change how the rubber goes on the, on the concrete. I also think this is hard because the professor already pinged me and was like, hey, where do we compare it for Bristol? Look, I can make an argument it's a mini Dover. I can make it arguments. But the truth is, Bristol is Bristol is Bristol. Not There is nothing else like Bristol. Um, you know, and it's it's that's why you mentioned Matty, Matty D back in the day. You mentioned Benedetto. We mentioned, we see Busher run well here, right? It's, it's, man, it's a little bit of a standalone. I'll be honest. It's a standalone from the bottom to the top. Like, if you knew it was going to be a bottom race, there are certain guys that are good at the bottom. If you knew it was going to be a top race, but we don't, I, at least I don't know. And I've talked to some people in the garage area, and I've talked to two very well-respected people, and they've given me two completely different answers about whether it be in the bottom or the top. So that tells me the garage doesn't know, right? This isn't secret information. Every interview on Saturday will be about, well, we don't know when it's going to move up, whether it will take rubber, when the top will get dominant. I just don't think we know. I have a question for you, Steve. Some books offer you, they allow you to parlay matchups. Love that. So, for example, if I were to take William Byron over Blaney, Byron is minus 110, and then take uh, Ross Chastain versus Kyle Busch at minus 110, it becomes plus 264. Is that something that you maybe would look at? Totally. I would be shocked if the book let you have the same driver. You know, I don't think you can two two against Ryan Blaney because then if Blaney wrecks, you double you cash in. If you find a book that'll let you do, I think that's an absolute hammer bet, right? Because then if you say you're Tim's and you're fading Logano and you say it's because Logano has some issues finishing here, then if they'll let you parlay two matchups against against Logano, but I think that's outside the restriction in most books. But I love an idea of parlaying a couple matchups together. Um, it just like we said at the beginning, it just adds a lot of entertainment, and I think that it's fair to. If you're going to fade, say, a manufacturer, that's another great way to do it, right? If you think, hey, man, the, the Toyotas are going to be great, well, then pick one or two Toyota drivers over a couple of a different manufacturer, and at least then you have that going for you. 
Speaking of Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain, Professor, what are the numbers shown in that head-to-head? Considering It says Kyle Busch, as far Vegas, as you can see, if he goes back a long ways. Because Kyle Busch is favored against Ross. Well, how far back do you want to go, Stevie? Well, that's a problem. Just do next gen, and I would say it's probably Ross. It's one to one if you do next gen. Remember, yeah. we only had it's two so races here because of dirt. of the dirt. I believe this. Look at the teams that ran well at Vegas and Phoenix, and I would make a generic statement that. They understand two different style of racetracks, two very different style of aero packages, two very different style of Goodyear tire. So I would just say they're on top of something. I'm not going to say what it is. I don't know what it is. But whether it's preparation of information, you follow me here, Tim's. It's kind of like yeah. a golfer. Like I don't care if we're changing from Augusta to you know to uh, going out and playing an ocean course somewhere. If the guy is striking the ball, he's going to keep striking the ball, even if it doesn't maybe. You know, speaking of which, we're going to get to the players because I have a ball striker on my list for the players. But yeah, but, we, we have we have a little uh, gripe with you too on golf, so we'll get there. With yeah. me, yeah, okay. Um, but so anyway, I'm taking a team that runs well at both places, right? Like, who who had the best speed? If you take Vegas and Phoenix, who would be your top three or four cars, Professor? So, with a lack of speed at a Hendrick at Phoenix. So you had Truex, Gibbs, Chastain, Blaney, and Reddick were all top 10 in both races. This is not, even though it's a short track, it is not the short track aero package. This is not what we ran at Phoenix. Um, because using the size of the track to describe the track is the dumbest thing in the world. So, um, because this isn't a short track. You would never take a short track car to Bristol, ever. When you're building your own car, this wasn't a short track car. So that's why these are dumb. And this is why New Hampshire is a short track, because you would absolutely take a short track car there. But we digress. That's a conversation for the download one day. Could come to fisticuffs. <laughs> Say those names again. Truex. You hear that? Truex. Gibbs, Chastain, Blaney, Reddick. Man, I'm just something in my gut tells me it's going to be Gibbs' good weekend. Yep. I like Reddick. Uh, if it's a top race, I think Reddick's pretty. It, that, that's a that's a guy who might fly through the field. I don't know how good he is on the bottom, I'll be honest, but I feel like he's a guy who can really rip that top if it's a top race. So he's good at the top of the high-speed tracks, but his Bristol numbers are not great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his Bristol numbers are terrible. So that that's where it's – the predictor has him way down because of that. Yeah. But I think they're not going to be down forever, Tim's. I think it's an experience thing. He's had her in the dirt. He has all these different things. I think the light bulb will click at some point. I just don't know if this is the weekend. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I have a bet for you, Tim's. I want to get Steven rest your thoughts on it. Ryan Blaney versus Reddick. Reddick is minus 106. Well, Tim's is fading Blaney, but I mean, Blaney runs so well here and he just survives. He's like a, he just shows up at the end. Yeah, he's struggled here recently, though. He's been caught up in stuff. So, like, he has one top 10 in the last five races here. Where did we do last week on the uh, number of leaders? I see that bet's back. Drivers to lead a lap over or under six and a half. Man, I feel I like it has that. to be an over just because of the pit road. We had six at Phoenix. I don't know what. And 10 lead changes. I think we were on the yeah, over on both of those. Yeah. Or we, we were on the under on both, right? Let you were under on least. both, and they both yeah. cashed under. Yeah. I like seven. over six and a half drivers to lead a lap at Bristol. At minus 130? Yep. I think there's no way they have less than six leaders there. It's been six both times in the next gen car. Ooh. I'm going over. Yeah, I said over two. Do you think this correlates to the number of lead changes, too, which is 15 and a half? Because you got to get at least seven, right? Seven lead changes, and then back and forth on pit road. I don't know. I think I think that's kind of a low number. So too. I like over six and a half and under on lead changes. Really? Okay. Why is that? Because I think what happens is the track starts in a certain condition. Somebody runs out there and leads 80 or 100 laps. Then there's a pit stop with a lead change. And then somebody else leads 125 laps. I would say if you look at the average lap leaders at Bristol, there's probably at least 
two, if not three guys that lead over 100 laps in each race. And I think it's a little bit of the track changes. You know, the concrete gets rubber gets put down on it. You go from the bottom to the top. Uh, people's cars come and go. Um, so now professors can't wait to tell me I'm totally wrong. But no, lap leaders, I, I usually... Right? There's usually at least a couple guys that lead over 100, maybe three. So the only reason I'm getting over six and a half leaders is I have three of them leading less single-digit laps, Tims. I have three of them leading like a one or a two-lap you know, whatever. Yeah. Like a pit cycle, a like lap lead or something like that. All right. Is there anything else? I'm so interested in this golf bone you have to pick. I'm questioning. Is there anything else for the race? Yeah. I just have one matchup that I think is my hammer probably for the week. And it's Bubba over Eric Jones. He's minus 110. He's the dog. Only really because he's, it's 14th versus 25th in the model. I know we talked about Jones a little bit earlier. But I don't know. That's a pretty big discrepancy. I think you got to just place it. Hey, last year when the pressure was on the line in that night race, Bubba, Bubba did what he needed to do, and he was, I mean, it was a stressful evening. Uh, that tells me that, you know, there should be way less stress this time, way less pressure. Yeah. I know we talked about qualifying at Hamlin and Seabell, obviously how good they are. Qualifying matchup, Hamlin minus 130, Bell plus 100. Obviously, Denny's really good, but so is Bell. At plus 100 for a matchup, you know, do you just throw something down on that? Yes. And because what else are you going to do on Saturday? It's Saturday afternoon, like maybe a couple of your basketball games haven't tipped off yet. You throw a couple of dollars down and you're going to know instantly. Like that's what I like is some of these uh, basketball games, you can like bet first score. Like is two scores in the first minute? Like you can bet that. No. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> I'm going to be the only guy that comes back from the Bahamas stark white. <laughs> They'd be like, what happened? I'm like, well, there was no windows in the sports book. <laughs> that was Tim's in Nashville. He was on it the was boat great. undercover. I'm out in the water. Yeah. Mm -mm, not anymore. Travel will no, be up there on no. the boat tapping away. But before we move to golf, are there any of these top 10 um, double and triple driver bets on the far right that pique your interest? I've been burned with these. I feel like top Man. ten is such a it's such a so many minus money. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I I don't think there's enough juice for the squeeze. The Briscoe Gregson one is is really just kind of the long shot plus nine fifty. Obviously, if you think it's going to be kind of chaotic day or Stuart Haas is going to have a good day, yeah. maybe, but. And those two have run really well this year, especially Grayson. Yeah. I, I, I have to agree with Tim's. If I was going to take one, I would take Bubba Jones or Briscoe Gregson, just because you got a couple Toyotas or a couple SHR cars. Um, one's at five fifty, one's at nine fifty. You know, because I, I look at that as almost like a true parlay. I know it's only a two legger, but it's it's like a long shot two parlay. It's a really 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 small wager. It's just a fun cheering bet. I don't think it's. You know, we talk two different ways on this pod a lot. We talk one about trying to give you some insight to have a profitable or a more enjoyable weekend because you won more bets than you lost. But when we talk pure entertainment, like truthfully, you're going to buy a movie ticket anyway. So if you're going to go spend the movie ticket price on a handful of bets, that would be one I would pick just because if it hits, it would be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talk about your buddies with it after. Gloat. T-shirt would be printed. Mm-hmm. Should we move to uh, oh, golf? Oh, please. Let's hear this golf, bitch. I am so ready. I'm just wondering what golf bet you have this week because I'm thinking I'm going to fade it the other way because I feel like every time you throw one out there, it doesn't f***ing hit. It doesn't make the cut. <laughs> I was waiting for this. Hey, I don't claim to be a golf expert. <laughs> so I just want to know what you're betting this week for TPC. Well, let's talk about the players. The players is um, not for the long hitter. The average drive last year was like 285 yards, not because I can't hit it further, just because the way the course is laid out. It's not a long bomber's racetrack. It is an absolute ball striker's dream. You have to be able to hit the approach shots. A lot of their approach, it's not a real long golf course. They have a lot of approach shots from 150 yards and in. 
Um, we had Scotty Scheffler's putter finally came to life last week. And when it came to life, he was out of control. He drove off the front of the field. What shouldn't come so to the, life is that beard ever again. It's got to go. That beard? Have you seen yeah, him? Yeah, it's, it's not good. He looks like Tim's, good. but it doesn't look like Tim's. It doesn't work. <laughs> if he walked in and saw Tampa Tim's, he would shave right away. They know a beard could look that good, and his looks like that bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't grow a beard. This is like it's two insane. days of shaving right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Professor's just staying right out of this conversation. <laughs> My man is built for speed. Uh, look, I like... Um, I, I don't have a guy I love here. I think Justin Thomas is going to have a good weekend. Oh, f- I have him as a top 20. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, got, I got JT plus 125 for top 20. Well, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, and then I'm trying I also, to not be. I can tell you my favorite bet on the board is here. Will Zalatoris top 20. Oh, I like that. Mm. I like it. He had a bat. For you guys who don't know Will Zalatoris, he looks like the kid from... uh, Happy Gilmore. uh, (laughs) Happy Gilmore. Great personality. Had a severe back injury. Had to have real, like, like when I say real back surgery, they're all real. But, like, you know, there are cleanups and then a real back surgery. He had a very invasive back surgery that had him out of the game for quite some time. Came back, like, months. Right, Trav? Am I accurate yeah. there? Yeah, I mean, he missed basically the entire season or something like that. Came back. and With you right before the Masters. Right. And, and, you know, you just don't know how they're going to come back. We talk about it on this, right? we got Alex Bowman who has it. We haven't seen him come back from it. Like, athletes and injuries, they, they are real. Uh, but I thought Zalatoris looked really good uh, last week. Hit the ball good. Ball striking was there. Showed no signs of fatigue. Played just as, you know, like he was ready to go. So I, I like Will Zalatoris. I love him as a long shot to win for just a little bit of fun. But top 20, he is definitely in my top 20. I even have a little a little top twenty sweeper parlay going with Homa, Zalatoris, Cantley, and Thomas. I like those. That's good. I like those too. I uh, I have Hideki Matsuyama plus one hundred for top oh. thirty. Love that. I'm telling you, what he did out there at uh, at the Riv out in Riviera was pff, that Sunday didn't get enough love. I hate that Tiger uh, had to pull out. Right, didn't he get the flu or something? Had to pull out of that event. I wish Tiger would have been leaderboard just to get the eyeballs on the tournament because because first of all Masayama in japan is like superstar status no he's but what he did, and what he did at the riv he shot what a 62 or something closing 62 to just beat them all up produce the professor's eyes are crossing right here tim's what do you got uh, i i tailed you on hideki matsuyama matsuyama i i think he's pretty good uh that'll be a good bet um i i like scotty scheffler i think if he if he's on that putter's on I think he's unstoppable. He's the favorite. I hate betting that was plus 500. I think I got him at, but I don't know. It's the players. I like it. But you were able to boost him, right? Yeah, I boosted him. I got like a 18% boost on one of the books. All right, so. talk boost. Talk boost. Tell the fan boost. When you say boost, because it happens on more than just one book. So just give the fan. We can't, because we, we said boost a couple times on this. Let's educate our NASCAR fan who's getting into gambling. Uh, when you say boosted bet, what do you mean? So basically, at no additional risk, uh, the sports book will increase your payout on the original bet. So if you place ten dollars on something, it'll give you a fifteen percent boost. It'll be the ten dollars to win whatever. Say it's even money, so ten dollars to win ten dollars plus fifteen percent. So no additional okay. risk. Still place ten bucks, make more money. You pick what you boost, or they pick what you boost. Uh, depends on the promo, but for most part, you pick what you boost. Okay, so if you love a bet, you could put a extra little boost on it. Mm-hmm. Or, or the other angle is you could take a super long shot, only put a small amount of money on it, boost it, because if it hit, it would super hit. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. our friends at FanDuel right now, uh, I have a third, 300% boost on it. It's got no, nothing more than $25, but still. So you could yeah. put $25 on Matsuyama at even money. You win your 25, you'd win 100, you'd win three t- 3x over the top. Is that how yeah. that would work? Yeah. That's a fun. That's fun. Pretty good. I Look would, at there's I a professor on his phone right now. Get him a FanDuel's account. I <laughs> yeah. saw it happening. I would max out the boost too. If it says max wager twenty five, which normally these max out at twenty five, I would put the whole twenty five and maximize your your payout. So I have another question for you. This is just let's talk strategy of using the boost. What if you took a matchup, heavy favorite matchup, and you use the boost to kind of erase the juice? 
Like say it was a minus 160, minus 180, because you see them in golf and racing. So now you would have to bet, I'm gonna say 180, but say it was a 25, let's use $20 so I can actually do the math. Um, so if it was a $20 bet at minus 180, uh, you'd have to bet $36. How's my math? Yeah, $36 to, to win your 36 back plus 20. So if you did a 300% boost, you would flip a minus 180 bet to be a super positive, right? Tim's my math yeah. sounded right there. Yeah, that sounds good to me. That, I was thinking about doing that with the there's a there's a matchup Tyler Reddick versus Kyle Busch. I think Tyler Reddick's minus 150 right now, and that's one I was thinking of using it on because I like him a lot over Kyle. And like you said, now it turns into a plus money bet. Way worse. Okay, it. so here's an example uh, on Fanduel: Brad Kozlowski versus Seabell. Seabell is minus two ten, I think. Twenty five dollars with the three hundred boost. He's now plus one ninety one. There you go. Love there it. you go. Now I don't like that bet specifically because I think Kez is going to be good there. But I, that point but is exact. Is well done. That's very so. That's a minus one sixty all the way to a plus one ninety swing. That's a huge use of your of your juice. All right, I like it. Well, guys, listen. I'd like to say we could talk all day, but I'm on spring break. We're going to have to wrap this up because I have uh, two lovely ladies sitting at the pool waiting on me. My wife and my daughter. My hold son on a second. Hold sleeping. on a second. What? We got trucks. You got to say something about trucks. Oh, we forgot trucks. Yes. What is this? Thank I thought they were still running the dirt somewhere. Thank you, Professor. It's Kyle Busch Bush in the trucks. It's not even truck. worth talking about it. Well, you got to well, let the fans I, know. Yeah. Professor, the floor is yours. So, so I have a question. So we have Kyle Busch, Eckes, and Heim are the top three. And I think there's a great chance that one of those three are going to win. Could you bet all three of those and make money? What are the odds? 140, 550, 600. Nope, the 140 is going to kill you. Okay. Um, so if you put if you put ten dollars on Heim, ten dollars on Eckes, and ten dollars on Bush, let's just talk about this. Then you would lose sixteen dollars if Bush wins. You would make thirty five profit if Eckes wins, and you would make forty if Heim wins. You like my math, Tim's? That's I right. Do. I think that's right. I think it's so. Good. Before I did all that, I would just put ten dollars on Eckes and Heim and avoid Bush. Or you would have to put like two units on Bush, and then it starts to get sl not even worth betting because now you have a huge outlay for Majeski to win or something. So Eckes dominated this race last year, and Heim ended up winning. So, did Eckes finish second to him? Yes. So what I do like is is Eckes and Heim top threes, both plus 170. Um, because I think there's a good chance that those three trucks are going to be one, two, and three. So I actually, to your point about betting them, you know, I would do that. I would take both Eckes and Heim for top three. Anything else, gentlemen? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, I got head shakes all around. All right, guys. It's the High Banks, the last great Coliseum. It's Bristol. The dirt is gone. The concrete is back. We have the PGA Tour at the TPC Players. If you're listening to this, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Don't be afraid. There'll be Sunday matchups. You can go on there and get some final round matchups on there. It's basketball tournament time. Right now, it's conference tourneys all around the U.S. And then March Madness right around the corner. We're going to see who gets the auto bids. We're going to see selection who gets in another way. But it starts with a full weekend of racing at Bristol Trucks, Xfinity, right? Xfinity 2? Triple header? No, Why no, is that? Why? I don't Didn't it used to be a triple header, triple header years ago? No. <laughs> so, it, so it was, this is the first time Trucks is going there twice a year. It used to be. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. But then it shows how old I am. When they went to dirt racing, it was just trucks and cup, and they've just kept it that way. So it's trucks and cup only from the high banks at Bristol. Correct. Xfinity's off. Uh, Xfinity's off. Yeah, they need that day off. They need that weekend off. I don't blame them. All right, well, get your bets in. Good luck, and may all your bets pay off.